Hello everyone, just a quick disclaimer before we get started. I don't claim that my builds are the best in the game, and I'm sure there are better ways to optimize some of them, but be aware that I do tend to get my builds at least endgame viable. This includes things like arbitration, steel path, idle on hunts, etc. Now that this is out of the way, these timestamps have been left here and in the description for your convenience. Feel free to skip around, but I'll start with the basics first just in case people don't know how to play this frame. Okay, let's start with comparing the base stats between the Prime and the non-Prime. So for regular Ash, you have 100 armor. For Prime, you have 175. Regular Ash, that's a 25% damage reduction. For Ash Prime, that is 36.8. It's when you're using things like Arcane Ultimatum, this doesn't really matter. Uh, and if you're doing Endurance Run, then it really doesn't matter. It is a good increase, but it's not particularly worth using one or the other over energy remains the same between the two health remains very high at 150 um this is definitely one of the higher health frames in the game and it's like this for both the prime and the normal uh the shield gets a bit of an increase going to the prime by 25 so you're looking at 375 for the prime 300 uh for the non-prime sprint speed goes up a little bit i mean sprint speed doesn't particularly matter in this game so we're just going to disregard that regardless. In terms of acquisition, Ash Prime, unfortunately, Ash, regular Ash is worth a lot on the marketplace. So it's not particularly worth going for that. And he's also incredibly hard to grind with the new update to Railjack. Now he's found in Railjacks rather than from Minix. That being said, just go for Ash Prime. Even when he's vaulted, he should never be worth more than regular Ash on the in-game market all right so moving into abilities we have ashes one which is shuriken launches a spinning blade of pain dealing high damage and impaling enemies to walls uh, it does not actually impale enemies to walls at least not that i have seen it slashes bodies up because it does a guaranteed slash proc which is very nice and it also does a very decent amount of damage unfortunately it has a pretty high drain for only launching two shurikens but it can also go through walls. It has a limited punch through, and it homes in on things. So if I just don't even aim at a target, it will go to a target regardless, as long as I'm aiming within their general direction. And that is pretty much his one in a nutshell. Moving on to his smoke screen. Drops a smoke bomb that stuns enemies and obscures their vision, rendering Ash invisible for a short time. It's invis. There's not a whole lot to say about it. It's pretty damn strong. It's one of the lower duration invises in the game, but it also provides a bit of utility for him on his four. That being said, it also has a bit of a stun. If you notice that the enemies kind of got a little knockback. So if, if someone is shooting at you and you deploy that, they're going to stop shooting. They are pretty much forced to stop with that stagger. Moving on to his three. It's just a teleport. It makes them vulnerable to finishers. I'm not, I don't currently have a melee equipped, so I'm not really going to demonstrate that. But as you can see, it kind of staggered him. If I had a melee, I would be able to do an execute. Uh, the, the base range is pretty good on this. So like if you stacked range, you could teleport to someone across the plains of Eidolon. It's also a really cheap ability, oddly. His teleport also synergizes really well with his four, just like his two also does. And in my opinion, his four is his bread and butter. What this does is when you activate it, he enters a state of focus, I guess you could say. And when he actually aims at an enemy, it marks him. Now, as you can see, there are three icons over his head, which means he's marked three times. So if I release my four, he'll be attacked three times by Ash's clones. He can have up to two of these at a time. And as you can see, that did a whole lot of slash even without having any mods. Another thing to note is his damage does true damage, which means no matter how much armor they have, that is always going to do the same amount. I could be going against, as you can see, it's, it's 2000 damage, right? These guys have armor. Now, if that armor even mattered to Ash, you would see that it would be doing less because that is the base damage, the 2000 slash. So it's a pretty good ability. Now, in terms of the synergy with the other abilities, basically just makes it cheaper. So it goes by marks. Pressing into four doesn't do anything, but marking an enemy does. And as you can see, 
Uh, of course, I picked up some energy, so that was no good. As you can see, that that did that's 12 energy. That that's a fair bit of energy. But if I go invis, right now I'm at 115. And I go down here, do that. Yeah, that 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 was six less energy. As you can see, it just completely cut it in half, which is really good. So you really do want to have the invis if you want to not blow all your energy on a ton of marks. And the way his three synergizes with his four is... So you mark a bunch of enemies, right? And then you can release it and then mark an additional one with his three while those are in progress. And that joins the bloodshed and animation locks you. You become invisible, which, or invisible, invulnerable at least. Which is, well, it's better than nothing, but frankly, there's pretty much no reason to actually hit this. So, another thing is, is you notice that it's three marks. Um, that's actually a new change. I'm not going to touch on that too much. But, if an enemy dies in the two marks before the third clone actually starts attacking, you actually get that energy back. I don't know if that will kill him in two strikes. It does. So you notice that you get that ener en uh, energy back. Um, so if it does kill them quickly, you do actually get that energy back on a blade storm, which is incredibly useful, as you can imagine. Especially if each mark only costs you a little bit of energy, and you get that back, as you see right there. So really, the only energy cost that you really have to worry about when you're doing a lot of damage with blade storm is. Your invis, which has a low duration, which is kind of a pain in the ass. Okay, so something worth mentioning is Ash's clones are pretty slow. Now, there is actually a way around this, because, like, you know, if you're just sitting here, like, waiting for your clones to do some damage, that, that's a lot of time wasted. Like, what's stopping you from just using a Zar or a, a Saren just coming in and just one-shotting absolutely everything you know what i mean it just takes too long but there is a bit of a way to fix that and that is actually with melee his clones go off of his melee right so if you have now mods like pressure point and and you know the damage ones don't really do anything but the combo multiplier of course when his blade storm actually goes off of the combo multiplier and uses mods like attack speed so you know you can get use out of a prime fury a, a riven with attack speed you don't actually need this just trying to make a point here attack speed all this attack speed in, in combo duration all that means he's able to do more damage right and he's able to go way faster with his clones he can clear that field a lot faster than he would normally do if you just spec your melee into it. Now, I don't use this melee for anything else. You're not going to see me going and hitting somebody with it. I mean, sure, that does a lot of damage for not really being specced into damage, but that's not the point. The point is Bladestorm. We want to maximize that Bladestorm as much as we can, and that is a way to do it. I will get into this more when I actually go over the builds, but this is pretty much what you need to know is that it's you can make it faster, which is very important. He really needs it. You also notice I'm one-shotting these guys now, and I wasn't earlier, and that is because his damage goes off of the multiplier. So the base damage I was doing was 2,000. Like, this is a stock Ash, and he's able to kill these all 60s with ease. That That's really good. I mean, not every frame can do that. So, that being said, I can just keep ramping up this multiplier, and, and eventually it'll get to a ridiculous amount. Now I'm doing 4,500. I'm not going to bore you with attacking the same target for the rest of this video. I just wanted to point out that mechanic because it's very important, especially for Bladestorm builds. All right, let's move on to augments. So I've equipped all the augments here, right? And I only did an intensify to help explain the first augment. So Shuriken Augment. Hits exposed weaknesses on enemies, reducing their armor by 70% for 8 seconds. So this scales with duration and strength. So the higher the strength I have, the higher the strip. In this case, with 144 strength, I have 100% strip for 8 seconds. If I were to put, you know, some continuity in there, I would indeed have a longer strip. We're not going to do that, though. We don't need it. Um, so let's go ahead and showcase that really quick. It's a very simple mod. 
yet very effective, because subsequent hits will do a whole bunch of extra damage. For some reason, the strip doesn't really seem to work after it's been launched through a wall. I... I don't know. Shurikens are weird. Regardless, this is a very strong ability, especially for endurance runs. Moving on to his his second one. So his second one actually allows your invis to spread to nearby allies. And that, of course, scales off of range and duration. So if I have more range, it'll reach further than 15 meters. If I have more, you get the point. So with that being said, right? You have your buddy, you're playing, you know, the game with your buddy, and then you decide, hey, I want to be able to cloak you. Now you can! This also works incredibly well on rescue targets. It's really not much to be said about this ability, but it, it's, it's not bad. Because, of course, normally, you wouldn't normally be able to cloak your friend, as you can see. So, that is that. Alright, going on to his third augment. Teleport augment. Teleport will perform a finisher on the target, dealing 200% extra damage, and then half of the energy for using teleport is refunded on an actual kill. So, literally all this does is give you a little bit of extra damage if you happen to use an execute after a teleport. So, it, it basically just does the execute for you, okay? So I press 3, and I- that's it. I just press 3, and it did the execute for me. And it does a little bit of extra damage. This augment has not aged very well. In- in my honest opinion. Because if I were to just take that off, what's stopping me from just doing that anyway, and probably doing enough damage to still kill my target? The only difference is I- I have to press the execute. Okay. Hi, I'm in the process of editing this right now, and I just noticed that the augment actually made me do less damage. So I went back and tested it, and yeah, sure enough, it actually makes me do way less damage for some reason when I have something equipped that's supposed to make me do more damage. I d okay. I don't know why this is a problem. I don't care. Don't use this augment. It wasn't even worth using, even if it was for the extra damage. Just don't use it. And no, it's not because I was using Covert Lethality. I actually, these numbers that you saw on screen, they are actually from my testing with no mods. Now, this used to go really good with a mod called Covert Lethality, which no longer does what it used to, and it used to just force an, it, it guaranteed an insta-kill, basically. So when you paired those two together, it was like, just a guaranteed death. I, I mean, that's really all it was. This was... The augment has not aged well. Moving on to his fourth. Bladestorm augment. Bladestorm attacks increase your melee counter by four. And then it give, it even gives you extra combo duration just for having it equipped. So melee focus, not too bad. But let's, let's get into what this actually does. So let's say I have my melee out and then I just start marking some targets. Let them go to town. Look at how fast that is going up. Wow. And then it just starts one-shotting them already. From zero, I managed to get it up to a seven times just from killing a few guys. Not bad. Not bad at all. That's actually pretty strong. I can get a 12 times power multiplier in no time. But at this point, if my blade storm is doing all the damage, you really don't need to be using your melee now, do you? Anyway, that is his augments in a nutshell. So at this point in the video, I like to answer the question, is this frame steel path viable? Can it run arbitrations? Is it part of the Eidolon hunts? That's a big fat no to the Eidolon hunts. However, he is viable for arbitrations in steel path, but I would say more so for steel path because his four ignores armor. And frankly, one of the biggest problems in steel path is slightly higher levels, but really it just comes down to how much extra freaking armor they have, and he just does not care. He's also really good at endurance runs because he has his invis. Yeah, I mean, arbitrations, I would say Ash is probably overkill. I mean, literally anybody else can get that job done. Just about. Not, not actually everybody. Um, so yes, he is steel path viable. However, he is not 
the easiest, you know, to build. He does want helmet really bad. The helmet system really takes his ability to the next level. You know, getting rid of the useless abilities that he really doesn't need and, you know, replacing them with one that can give him more damage and stuff. It really puts him over the top in Steel Path, allowing him to do, you know, endurance runs and all that stuff very easily. All right, so now we're going to go into the builds. I personally like to have all my builds work together, which means that not all of my builds are like perfectly optimized. I will be showing you alternatives though, if you want to specialize into a specific one, but because of, you know, different polarities between the builds being used, I can't actually do all of them together at their fullest potential. I could do most of them, just not all of them. I don't feel like getting, you know, a second Ash Prime just to be able to demonstrate that when I could just show you what I would normally be running. All right, so the first build is a Bladestorm build. We are going to be just completely specking into as much damage as possible with the Bladestorm. Um, so in order to do this, you are going to need to subsume Banshee to get her Silence ability, which in turn will allow us to use her Augment, which increases finisher damage. You're going to need two Formas, one on Rising Storm and one on Constitution. So I'll explain how the build works in a minute. I just want to explain my choice on all the mods. So Steel Charge is obviously to buff that damage. Intensify and Transient buffs that a bit. Reduces duration slightly. Stretch is only in here because we want a little bit more range on Silence. Obviously, we have Savage Silence to boost the damage even more. Rising Storm. Now, you can replace Rising Storm if you don't really need this extra combo duration or you don't need to be getting, you know, a bunch of combo counter per, per hit. You can honestly just replace this with Seeking Shuriken, which is what I did for this one. And then now you also have an Armor Strip available in your kit, and you're still doing pretty much the same amount of damage. So that is an option that you can do. Uh, we're running Fleeting. You can run Streamline here if you just if you're able to upkeep your energy, it's no problem. Run Streamline, you'll get um, quite a bit of duration back, which is important. We have Prime Continuity. If you don't have Prime Continuity, just use regular Continuity, and in which case, I definitely recommend using Streamline. Um, we have an eight out of ten Transient. Uh, if we spec too much into this, it's just the diminishing returns. It's just not really worth it. You don't need to. You can if you want. Do whatever. I do 8 out of 10. And I have Constitution here. It's a Nightmare mod. If you don't have Constitution, run Message. It comes from Planes. It's a lot easier to get. Lastly, in our Exilus, we have Power Drift. There's really not much else to run here. This is just... Yeah, might as well have the extra strength. All right, now we're going to move into Arcanes. And one that I really like to do is, is Arcane Fury. It's a bit expensive to get, but it's also extremely good for Ash because on a critical hit, there's a 60% chance for 180 melee damage for melee weapons, which actually applies to his Bladestorm clones. So proccing it is super easy, and then you just get a flat damage buff, which is super good. Mine's not max, but it still does a ton of damage. Then we have Ultimatum, so unfinished kill, 100% chance for 1,200 armor. Now that's really good, because if you try to use something like Guardian to make him tankier, it just, you have to actually take damage for that to work, and then, you know, if you're invisible, that's not really happening. So, Ultimatum, all you gotta do is get some finisher kills, and you got a really good chance of getting it. In fact, it's guaranteed for anything past rank 3. That's really, really good. So pretty much the only reason why we run Ultimatum is if you're with a team or whatever, chances are they're probably not going to be invisible too, it, which means if they're getting shot, you're probably going to end up taking some stray bullets as well. So we do have this as kind of like a fallback. If you're running by yourself or whatever, technically you really don't need this. Like occasionally it may help like in between casting your, your smoke screen, but in reality... If you're by yourself, you really don't need it. I do it just for extra insurance. It is what it is. Okay, so if you remember earlier, I mentioned how his blade storm needs, you know, it, it it needs mods. It needs a whole lot of speed mods. Now, you don't need to follow this build for build. If you just get Quickening, Prime Fury, or Fury, and if you can get a Riven, even, to increase your attack speed, that is the most ideal thing for Ash, because the faster his clones are hitting things, 
the more damage he's going to do and the less likely you're going to get you know completely robbed by the siren in the room or whatever it is you're up against so you really don't need his melee for anything except for a whole bunch of combo duration it's not going to go by the melee damage but you can still you know have that in case you need to hit something you pretty much never will his blade storm hits most targets um so that being said just stack speed and combo duration that is your best friend all right so now moving on to operator school i use an eric just to give myself energy back I, I really don't have any other reason to use anything else so we just use it for energizing dash and a bit of energy back he's already pretty energy efficient but it it helps so that's what i run okay so how this is going to work is basically you get into a fight you can give yourself some energy and you're going to press your silence ability, right? This will give you your extra finisher damage that we talked about. You're going to go invis. You can do the invis first, doesn't matter the order. And then you're just going to mark a whole bunch of targets and let it go. Now, this is going to bring your multiplier up a whole bunch. And those guys are dying. 174,000 damage. Now, I'd say that that's pretty good. Now, if you have the arcanes, that can go even further. You know, you get a bit of a bit of a crit real quick right and then you again refresh that have all those dudes marked 305,000 now that that's not even with the maxed arcane fury that is pretty good and that's pretty much all there is to that build just stay invisible when you need to be staying invisible and keep your buffs up that gives you extra damage and just blade storm everything to death the only alternative, you know, is if you're using Seeking Shuriken, is if you say you want to shoot something instead, uh, you just have that so you can do that. It's really, that that's the only difference. Um, so that is literally how you do it. I'm going to roll some footage so you can check out the build actually in action. I go against Acolytes, I go against uh, some of the higher level index targets, etc. But that's really all there is to it. I mean, apart from maybe applying some Brow procs to an enemy first, which will give you over a million damage. Look at that. Look at that guy just absolutely melt. It was a 125 Acolyte, which isn't like the highest, but it's... That's a pretty quick kill. And then I just, you know, nuke this room with all the Blade Storms. I gotta get all the marks out. That's pretty much the only downside of this build is that it takes a while to get those marks all out, you know. Because once you have the marks out and it's in the process of killing all of them, you can't just mark additional targets as you go. You kind of have to wait for that to finish, and then you're able to recast. So let's move on to another Acolyte real quick. I had another spawn later in the mission. There he is. Drop a pad because I was low on energy. And then look at that. His shields go down nice and quick, and then he goes down nice and quick. Look at that. That's lovely. So let's move on to Index real quick. So this is level like 160, 170-ish. Look at that damage. This is four rounds into Index, and he's just still doing damage. My potato aim, but still, I mean, look at that damage. And that's all coming from Bladestorm and a couple of Viral procs. That's all you need. He can just steamroll Index. It's absolutely unbelievable. So with all that being said, that is the end of this build. We will be moving on to the next one. Okay, so moving on to an endurance build. This build is designed for extremely long run, stripping high level armor, and just making a joke of, of super high level missions. So technically, Helminth isn't required for this, but Eclipse or Roar is really good at boosting your damage. This build takes three Forma if you want it to be compatible with the other builds, including an Aura Forma, you'll need to add a Xenuric and an Aramun. And if you want to specialize into it, it'll be five. And you won't be able to do the others. So you'll need to add a Xenuric, a Nerman, an Aura, and two Vazern. Specializing into it will also allow you to use Prime Sure Footed, which does help quite a bit for when the Acolytes show up. But just keep in mind, you still won't be able to do the other builds with this. Alright, and now to go over the mods and why we chose them. So for the Aura, we have Enemy Radar, because we really don't need Corrosive Projection or Steel Charge here. Corrosive Projection because we have Seeking Shuriken. And still charge because we're not particularly going to be using a melee. I mean, you can go with that if you want, but I'm using enemy radar because when you start getting into, you know, a thousand plus levels, it's good to know who exactly is around you and where they are. Going into the other mods, we are starting with Umbral Intensify to, we're just going to basically stack a bunch of strength 
without hurting too many of our other stats. We're also going to be stacking a bunch of duration. Now, we're going to be using Seeking Shuriken, but if you haven't noticed, it doesn't actually have a range on here, and that's because it has a flat range of 60 meters, so we can totally kill range without actually affecting our skills too much. Next, we have Rolling Guard, which I'll explain a bit more later, but basically, you have to cast smoke screen repeatedly, and you can't do it while you're invisible. So if you're in a thousand plus levels and you have to cast smoke screen, you're you're gonna be visible for at least a second, a second and a half. Rolling guard is basically there as a safeguard for when your smoke screen goes down. Seeking shuriken, obviously higher levels are gonna have way higher armor, so we're going to have that to strip them. Secrets is just to get a little bit more strength without affecting too many other stats. Prime Continuity to bring up our duration. You can use regular Continuity if you absolutely need to. Transient Fortitude completely maxed because we just want a bunch of strength out of it. And we have Narrow Minded that to kind of counterbalance that abil minus ability duration. And then we have Prime Flow for when we get hit with something like an Energy Drain on a Disruption. Moving on to the Exilus, I don't actually have an Exilus here because I like my other builds. I actually use my other builds a lot more than I use this one, but Prime Sure Footed is really good here. However, if you want to get that, you do need to add a couple more formas. You're going to need one here and here. So, that being said, let's move into the Arcanes. So in terms of Arcanes, you can use, basically, because you're going to be going against such higher levels, you're going to want to stack as much damage as possible. And I find that Arachne, I think uh, Arcane Rage is also pretty good if you're able to get that consistently. Um, pretty much anything to just stack a whole bunch of damage is ideal. You're not really going to need any armor or anything because typically in an Endurance run, getting hit means a death, assuming your Shield Gate doesn't save you. I use Energize just for when energy drain hits and you know I can't spam pads or anything like that but spamming more damage really doesn't hurt so that is that so bear in mind you are going to want a pretty strong weapon when you start getting into the higher levels if you don't have a decent weapon well you're not really going to be doing anything because your blade storm you're not specking into blade storm so that is certainly not doing damage you're going to want some sort of weapon to deal with the high level targets operator school I run Xenuric, so I can, I mean, technically you can run Matterai to stack your damage between, you know, between kills, but that's just, it's so overkill, it's not even funny. I just like to have the extra energy since this isn't the most efficient build on the planet, so that is my choice. So now, basically, in terms of how to use this, is you have access to rolling guard. So when you're not invisible, you're vulnerable. Assuming, just assume at this point that anything can one-shot you for whatever reason, which means you need to roll. And as you see in the top right, that made me invulnerable for enough time to play my smoke screen. Okay. So now that smoke screen is going to run out, and just as about the smoke screen is about to go out you roll so when you're out of it you're invulnerable and then you go back into stealth and then you get out basically what this is going to do is it's going to make sure that between your invises you're not taking unnecessary damage lowering your shield gate etc etc then what you do from there is you pretty much just give yourself your damage buff and you hit something and you one shot something that's literally all there is to it and I'm going to show you some gameplay on higher level content just so you can kind of see the idea of how this actually works. Alright, so we're starting off with an Acolyte fight. Obviously I have a really good melee, I'm using Glaive, but with that armor strip, that Acolyte just absolutely gets deleted from this world. Bear in mind I do use Magus Lockdown to keep the Demolus in place. And while he's stunned, I have no issue killing him, even at, you know, 650, 670, whatever they may be. You just keep that armor strip up and hammer into them, because nothing else can see you. So definitely be sure to use mods to make your weapon silent. And that's pretty much all there is to it. This is how you do endurance runs with this build. The next build we're going for is focused for crowd control and stealth, working really well in rescues and interceptions, even on steel path. It's also very good for self-leveling weapons and friends very quickly. This build does require Helminth using Equinox's Rest and Rage ability to get enemies sleep. 
This build requires three formas, one being an aura forma if you want it to work with the other builds. So you add an aura forma, a Nariman polarity, and a Xenaric polarity. All right, so starting off with the mods is in the aura we have enemy radar. And the reason why we do this over the others is because we always want to know where these enemies are actually going to be. That way we can put them to sleep properly and we'll know when to cloak. Okay, for the other mods, what we have is overextended because we just want as much range as we can possibly get. So we can just hit everything with our smoke screen, assuming we're using smoke shadow, which will allow us to cloak friendlies, as well as be able to just put everything to sleep. We have streamline to reduce the costs. We have stretch to further increase the range. Smoke shadow. This is if you're running with a team and you want to cloak them or you're doing a rescue or whatever. Prime flow so we can just bank a ton of energy when we need to just spam our rest and rage we have extra ability duration with prime continuity you can use regular continuity you obviously will just have less time auger reach to further maximize as much range as we can do and constitution so we can just get us some more duration and in our exilus we have enemy sense to further increase our map awareness Okay, moving on to Arcanes. Arcanes aren't totally necessary. I don't even know why I'm running Guardian here. Energize is, is pretty good. Uh, it's it's pretty much the only one I would, I would really recommend for this. Everything else is just totally optional. Not going to lie. Alright, moving on to Operator School. Definitely Xenuric. Now, this shit is not optional. You definitely are going to want Xenuric for the Energizing Dash. Uh, you're going to be using a lot of spammy abilities, and unfortunately, we can't use Fleeting. So it's definitely worth doing. Okay, moving on how to actually use the build. One thing you need to make sure is that on your appearance, your emissive icon looks like this. You need to be using a darker color in order to actually get the sleep effect because if you see in abilities, there is two versions of this. It's why it's called rest and rage. If your emissive color is dark, targets are put to sleep. If your emissive color is bright, targets become more vulnerable to damage. We want it for the sleep. So, I'm going to enable these guys really quick after giving myself some energy, and this is what it's going to do. So, they're going to shoot at us while now we're cloaked, and technically all of our friends are cloaked as well, and you can put them to sleep. It is literally this simple. I'm going to show some gameplay of it actually getting some use. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so in terms of using this on a steel path interception, you're going to capture a node like I just did there. You're going to notice that all the enemies spawn and rush to that one node that you just captured. You're going to take complete advantage of this. And while they're rushing to that, you're just putting them all to sleep while you're capturing the other nodes. So once you capture all the nodes, you go back into the middle where you originally captured your first interception point, and all you do is you literally just spam three and two, and you just sit there and let the round end. This is how you can get interceptions done incredibly easy on Steel Path. Just bear in mind that if you're not killing enemies, the acolytes aren't going to spawn, so it's not really great for endurance runs, but if you're just trying to get the completion for the node, this is the best way to go. So here I'm just going to quickly demonstrate how easy rescue is even on steel path with this build. So I disable all those traps with my weapon. I put that warden to sleep. I get in through the door. I hack a couple of these consoles. The target's in there. So what I do is I just cloak him. And then I run to the exit. I keep an eye on my timer. I put some enemies to sleep as I go. It's not totally necessary. If you're fast, you can just get right to the exit and they won't have a chance to do anything. But I keep an eye on the timer. I see he's relatively close. It's about a 40 meter range. So as long as within that, you're pretty much set. And they'll, they'll never know. It's so easy. So one of the other things this build is really good at is going to Adaro Sedna. And what you can do is you can put everything to sleep and what you do is you take a weapon that you want to level or whatever and if you kill things without being detected you get a multiplier on your XP gain so as you can see these that little low life grenier just gave me 3000 XP normally they don't give that much this is with a booster but as you can see these guys are giving a ton of XP and you can use this to level a weapon from 0 to 30 in like 5 minutes. It's so easy to just level when you have a build like this. You can cloak to make sure things don't see you. You can put things to sleep. 
so you can keep that 500% XP boost. And that's literally it. I leveled this weapon in like five minutes. Now, I mean, you do have to have a weapon that's able to kill these guys, but it, it's still, like, if you're just trying to form a really good weapon, it's no problem at all. You just stick a mod on that can suppress your weapon, and you're pretty much good to go. You can also do this to level your friend's frames. If they bring in, like, a melee or whatever that can kill things, you can just carry them through a mission while they get all the stealth kills, and you can level them in, like, six, seven minutes. I know it says seven and a half minutes on the thing, but it's it was five. It's just a bug right now with the timer and missions. So yeah, I would say Ash is overall a pretty good frame, and I would definitely recommend him. It can be a bit annoying that he really wants a helmet so much, but he is pretty solid regardless. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, and if you're looking forward to future content like this, don't forget to subscribe. If I missed anything or you'd like to leave constructive criticism, just leave it down in the comments. I appreciate all the support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.